I understood was to take precedence. So, and now Mr. Tsipras, please. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. President. I think that this debate should have happened quite some time ago. Because the debate that we've held here today isn't only about the future of Greece, it's about the future of the Eurozone. And it's not possible for these debates to take place behind closed doors. That's not our responsibility. For five months, negotiations have been conducted indeed behind closed doors. But this is a huge political issue about where we're going, where we're going to end up. And we've seen today from this very fruitful debate, from the various different contract contrasting views, which was not uh, didn't take the nature of state against state in the Eurozone. They were highly political. And I really do respect the views which were expressed, even those which were uh, particularly rhetorical and, uh, and controversial. I fully agree with the view which has been put forward that the European Parliament has to play a more active role. How is it possible, I wonder, that we have uh, three institutions? We have the Troika uh, and, uh, well, Commission and the European uh, Central Bank. Well, it's there because it pays. But how is it possible within the Troika to have uh, uh, allowed people to, who are taking decisions that that to be that is the IMF and uh, but it's not the European Parliament, the heart of democracy in Europe. And I would like very honestly to state that this is a European issue. If negotiations are only conducted exclusively between the, the Greek side and the Commission, if that had been the case, then we would have come up with a solution a very long time ago. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, we had to negotiate within a procedure, well, uh, listen to what I have to say. We were required to discuss amongst the Greek government on the one side and on the other three different institutions, which very often had uh, different conflicting visions of reality and views. Now I'd like to focus on the essence of this and to uh, answer some of the points which have been raised in the course of this morning's debate. Firstly, if the Greek side has tabled proposals, uh, you will decide whether they are decent ones or not. Well, yes, we provided a 47-page document which was the result, well, not our positions, but we felt it was the result of a very painful and, dis and difficult negotiating process. Unfortunately, the image that has been put out is that we didn't table proposals. Last Monday, the Greek side came back with a uh, new document with reliable proposals, which was accepted as the basis for, uh, the basis for discussions between the three uh, institutions last Monday. Now, those proposals obviously include a very strong commitment to achieve our fiscal objectives those which are required on the basis of the rules because we do recognize the fact that the Eurozone has its rules we respect them but we also have the right to choose where we as a sovereign government where we will put the, uh, the tax burden in order to achieve those objectives and I honestly believe 
that is the sovereign right of any government to decide to increase taxation on uh, profit-making businesses and not uh, affect the lowest possible pensions and cut back further there to achieve those objectives. Now, if it's not the, sovereign, the, the right of a sovereign government, how it's going to uh, achieve those objectives, then I think we need to adopt a very extreme anti-democratic view. In those countries under a program, elections shouldn't take place. Governments should be appointed then, technocrats. And they will be responsible for taking the decisions. And I would like to inform you that you're right, indeed, in Greece, from the past. Yes, there are things which are not correct, and we have to get rid of those. For example, early retirements. We were the first to take the initiative to say that, without anybody having to tell, tell us, we want to get rid of these very early retirements in a country uh, which is in such dire financial straits. We need to reform, and our commitments then for uh, fiscal adaptation uh, are there so that we can have a surplus rather than deficits. And it goes without saying that we are committed to that. But we want the, uh, the right to choose on the uh, burden share out where we distribute the burden. And I'm sure that most of you would uh, agree on that. Ladies and gentlemen, the question was asked as to whether we have some sort of hidden plan to take Greece out of the Eurozone. I can be very honest. All of last week, the vast majority of statements by, by European uh, politicians and officials said that no in the referendum would automatically mean uh, leaving the Eurozone. Now, politicians, uh, people knew that when they were called on to vote. But nonetheless, they came up with a result that some people were surprised with. Now, if I'd had the aim of taking Greece out of the uh, uh, euro, I wouldn't immediately have made the statements I made as soon as the ballot box closed uh, to understand the outcome, not as, uh, as a mandate to break with Europe, but rather a mandate to achieve a better, a better, uh, s fairer and more sustainable agreement. That is our objective. I have no other hidden plan, and I'm really putting my cards on the table in saying this. I've heard from many of you, particularly from those who were uh, most highly uh, rhetorical, they were talking about our inability to, uh, um, to address the solidarity from European partners. Well, lending is certainly a form of solidarity, there's no doubt about that. But we want a sustainable program because we want to be in the position to repay the loans that we've accepted. And when we ask to uh, reduce the debt, we are asking for that because uh, we want to be able to uh, pay this back. We, want to be forced, we don't want to be forced time and time again to accept new loans to pay off the old ones. Mr. Weber, well, the strongest moment of uh, solidarity in modern European history was in 1953 when your country uh, came out of two world wars and Europe, the peoples of Europe, showed at the London Conference in 1953 the greatest possible solidarity. 60% of uh, Germany's uh, debt was written off at that time, and that was the most significant expression of solidarity in modern European history. I heard from my friend Guy, Mr. Verhofstadt, well, we were candidates for the uh, um, President of the Commission together, and we've got uh, a good relationship. But he was asking how and with what reforms are you going to do this? You're not proposing reforms. What have you done? Let me answer that. 
over the past five months, it, it's true, we've spent more time negotiating than we have governing. We were in a, a fiscal stranglehold and uh, we were thinking more about how we're going to keep the, Ger the Greek economy alive uh, rather than on the other side. We, after five years, well, uh, after three years, we opened up the famous Lagarde list where certain ministers uh, of the previous government just shoved it into a drawer. It was us, us, who were uh, uh, brought to justice many of those people who had been responsible for tax evasion. Previous governments didn't do that. We were the ones who came to an agreement with Switzerland so that uh, Greeks who had taken their money abroad have to pay taxes. It's us who've passed legislation to uh, uh, limit these triangular exchanges. It's us who asked from the uh, media, the uh, big media owners in Greece, to pay their taxes. No other government had done that. We were the ones who supported uh, custom checks so that we could uh, clamp down on smuggling and uh, piracy. So we've done all of this. We haven't managed to do more than that, but uh, I want your support in order to change Greece. It's our common responsibility to change Greece, and by that we will be judged. To conclude, I would like to say that we all understand that this debate is not exclusively about one country. It's about the future of our common construction, the Eurozone and Europe. And two conflicting strategies about the future of European unification uh, come face to face here. We all have to shoulder our responsibilities. The Greek government, and I, and I want to really make this clear, we have ideological differences. We are divided on issues, but this is a crucial time for us to be able to pool our forces. All of the political forces in Greece uh, came around, their leaders came around the same table, and we came up with a framework on the basis of which tomorrow we are going once again to come up with some very specific proposals for a fair and sustainable solution, which uh, will bring about uh, uh, fair reforms as well. But to conclude, I would like to make the following point. A lot of people were talking about uh, a Greek tragedy. Well, I respect the laws which govern the European Union, the Eurozone. We can't proceed without laws. But you were talking about Greek tragedy. One of the most... Uh, uh, important uh, ones was Sophocles who wrote uh, Antigone and he taught us that there are times when the uh, greatest law of all human laws is justice for human beings and I think that that's something we have to remember. The President of the Commission, Mr. Juncker, now has the floor. <laughs> Mr. President, Prime Minister, President of Council, ladies and gentlemen, I would agree with all of those who have said that we must go back to the negoti negotiating table. That is where we belong. It was a mistake to leave the negotiating table.